Welcome to BC and Ammonics. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the Lunar Volvel. Now, this instrument is a little bit different from the other ones we've covered, as it's certainly not a sundial uh, nor an astrolabe. It's, um, it's more of a reference tool rather than an observational one. So while it can't directly measure any celestial bodies, it can do, it can do a, a, a high degree of calculation given certain inputs such as the date and lunar age. Uh, now before we dive into the actual function of this device, let's, let's take a look at some of the main scales. So starting up at the, the center here, we have a lunar age scale, which is attached to the solar pointer. Uh, and this lunar age scale, lunar age, is effectively uh, how many days it's been since the last new moon. This will come in handy when we're using this, uh, the Volvel to determine the ecliptic position of the moon. Uh, uh, radiating outward, we have this next scale, which ranges from 8 to 16, and back to 8. Um, this shows the number of hours of night, um, that is sunless hours, effectively, for a given date. Uh, and if you subtract, subtract this value for, from 24, you can get the, num the, hour, the number of daylight hours for a given date. So essentially calculating the number of day or night hours for a given day. And this only works for the middle latitudes. This is latitude specific, um, so it's an it's a approximate. Radiating outward from that, we have this next scale, which is the calendar of Gregorian months that we're most familiar with. Between that and the outermost scale, we have uh, a declination scale, dev scale of declination values. So these values range from uh, positive 23 and a half to negative 23 and a half. And these correspond to the declination of the sun above or below the, um, the equatorial plane. So we won't be using that during this demonstration, but it's another interesting piece of information to note. Um, when you have this set up for the day, you can, you can determine the declination as well as um, various other things as well. Like, for example, the, um, the zodiac degree, the date, um, and the number of night hours. Now, moving outward from the declination scale on this onto the outermost, we have the zodiac degrees, which we'll be using in just a moment. So, the lunar volvo can do a, a wide array of things, uh, and it depend depending on the number of scales it has. Uh, certain lunar volvos have more scales than this; some have fewer. And as such, they can do a wide range of, wide range of uh, functions, um, including the ones we've mentioned, but also ones such as acting as a moon dial, determining time by the moonlight. This one can't do that because it doesn't have an hour scale. But if you're interested in knowing how that works, uh, if you're watching this on bcnomonics.com, uh, that function is outlined in the how to use section just above this video. Now, let's move on to uh, the, probably the most straightforward function of the lunar volvel, which is identifying the position of the moon in the ecliptic. And along the way, we'll determine factors like how many night hours there are um, for a, our given day, um, the, the zodiac degree, as well as the declination value. So the first thing we need to know in order to set this up for today is the current date, which is May 31st. Now, you could either know the, uh, the, the calendar date or the zodiac date, um, zodiac degree. Uh, it doesn't really matter. The zodiac degree for today happens to be uh, 10 degrees of Gemini. But let's just use the uh, Gregorian date. So I positioned this, this pointer marked Sol, the sun pointer, uh, to May 31st. So May is right here. 31st is right at the end of that segment. So I will select May 31st. There we go. Now the next step is to position the moon uh, on over its lunar age scale. So again, how many days has it been since the last new moon? 23 for today's date. So I will select 23, keeping the, the sun pointer locked down. As you can see, starting at 1, we ring around until 23. So I will select 23. And with that, this, uh, the Volvel is ready to be read. So what can we learn from this current orientation? Well, as I said before, we can see that there are um, right about uh, eight 
hours of um, roughly eight hours of night for today's date. Um, we can also see the, the current zodiac degree, as I said, 10 degrees of Gemini. We can see that the current declination of the sun is right about uh, 22, roughly, uh, approaching 23. And most, perhaps most importantly for our demonstration, we can see the, um, the declination of the moon, its position in the zodiac, which is currently uh, 20 degrees of Pisces. Now, that will conclude this demonstration of the lunar volvel. But this particular instrument does feature uh, a bit of a bonus instrument on the reverse side, interestingly enough, which is this uh, quadrons weightus and a zodiac man. So the zodiac man can be used in reference with the, uh, the, the vulva on the other side to determine the appropriate dates for certain medical procedures. Uh, based on the position of the moon, certain procedures may be advisable uh, more advisable than others on given dates. Um, and with the Zodiac Man, you can determine when those sorts of things um, are most optimal, optimally placed. Uh, but the, the Quadrons Waitus, as I've covered in other videos, uh, can determine the unequal hour um, of the day. So I'll give you a quick overview now, but if you'd like a more in-depth explanation, I recommend you watch the dedicated Quadrons Waitus video. Um, but in case you haven't seen that, I'll give you a, a brief run through. So depending on the time of year to use this dial, oh, and before I get into that, I should just say that the um, unequal hours are essentially defined as one twelfth of the daylight period. So the first hour, the first unequal hour begins at sunrise, the sixth hour ends at noon, and the twelfth hour ends at sunset. So depending on the time of year, the length of an individual hour uh, will shrink or grow. So for example, the winter solstice, an unequal hour could be as short as 40 minutes. At the summer solstice, it could be as long as uh, 80 minutes. So for example, if I was using this at the winter solstice, um, the sun will culminate quite low in the sky, and the full range of motions of the plumb bob will only be this small arc, chopping the day into very um, small pieces. But in the, at the summer solstice, when the sun culminates much higher, this arc of the bead is much, much longer, and thus allows each segment uh, quite a bit more time. But anyway, how would we use this for today's date? So first of all, you'll have to know the culminating degree of the sun. I happen to know that today the sun culminates at 66 degrees uh, in the sky. So where's 66? So 60 right here. We have 60, 65, 66, uh, or did I say 63? If I did, I meant 66. Um, 66 degrees right there. So now with that bead, uh, with the string locked in place, next step is to position the bead at the end of the sixth hour. So that will be right here, just sliding it up a little bit. Now the style is ready to be used for the day. I can take the bead down. And now, if I were using this outside, I would position the, uh, the dial facing the azimuth of the sun and adjust it up or down until I see a beam of sunlight stream through both of these sighting veins. So when I see the shadow of this frontmost sighting vein fall over the second exactly, that's when I know that this is pointed directly at the sun. And when that happens, I can take my reading, I can position this, lock this bead in place, take a reading, and see where the bead falls along the scale. So I, for, for this example, I would be able to see that the bead is currently in this third segment of the, of the quadrant. So for example, this could either correspond to the third hour, if I was using this in the morning, or the 10th hour, if I was using it in the afternoon. So let's just pretend I was using it in the afternoon. Uh, it's currently the 10th hour of the day. And that roughly corresponds to mid-afternoon. As I said, um, the 12th hour is uh, sunset, so 10, or approaching, approaching 12. Um, and third hour would be, would be uh, roughly mid-morning. Uh, so that will conclude this presentation of Lunar Volvel. In the next video, which I suggest you watch, we'll be using this very same orientation to determine the position of the moon um, 
with the astrolabe. So hope you will watch that. Uh, but I thank you for watching.